The SMD LEDs are tricky to handle, so you'll need some tweezers for that. My top tip is to handle them on a flat, dark colored surface, because if you drop them on a carpet, you're probably never going to find them again. As a quick test, how many objects can you see in this carpet? Tell me the grid reference for them and let me know your answers in the comment section down below. The SMD LED typically has a small dot on the top, although you might need a microscope to see this. But sometimes the manufacturer uses this to indicate the anode, and other times it's used to indicate the cathode. So always check with the manufacturer's data sheet, or you can test it yourself. Here you can see that this LED illuminates when the positive is connected to the dot. On the back, you should find a symbol also. Again, this could be either the anode or the cathode. So check the datasheet or test it. Here we can see the LED illuminates when it's connected like this. To find the LED, we're gonna to go to a supplier's website and search through their components. I like these ones because they have a PCB footprint, which we can use later in the design. We can also see that this LED has an orange light. It has a forward current of 20 milliamps and a forward voltage of 1.9 volts. Now, if we provide an LED with three volts and it's only rated to handle 1.9 volts, then we're going to destroy it. Too much current is going to flow through the component and it will burn out. So we need a resistor to limit the current and remove that excess voltage. What size resistor do we need? Well, we have a three volt supply and the LED has a voltage drop of 1.9 volts. So if we subtract this from the power supply, then we have to reduce the voltage by 1.1 volts. The LEDs are rated for 20 milliamps or 0.02 amps. So 1.1 volts divided by 0.02 amps gives us a resistance of 55 ohms. And by the way, we have also covered Ohm's law in detail previously, links down below for that. So we also need to know the power rating of the resistor. We calculate that from the current of 0.02 amps squared multiplied by 55 ohms, which gives us 0.022 watts. And that is a very small amount, which is a good thing, because that's how much energy we're wasting as heat from the resistor. To remove that excess 1.1 volts, we basically convert the energy into heat to remove it. Okay, so we want to use SMD components, so we search the supplier website, and I will use this one. It is rated for 56 ohms, so it's slightly higher than we need, but close enough. It has a tolerance of 1%, meaning it could be anything between 55.44 ohms or 56.56 ohms. When I test this one, it's showing 56.3 ohms. We can also see that this resistor is able to handle up to 125 milliwatts, which is much higher than our 22 milliwatt design. And this component also has a drawing as well, which we can use in our design. So we will use this component. These resistors are also incredibly small, so you'll need some tweezers to handle them. We don't need to worry about the polarity because they will work either way we connect them. Check out one of the videos on screen now to continue learning about electronics engineering and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram and theengineeringmindset.com.